Welcome to the Why Not 3 podcast, where you get the behind the scenes of achieving a work-life balance with peak performance. Hi there and welcome to the Why Not 3 podcast. And yes, as you might have noticed that we did get the Honest Trailer uh, voiceover guide to do our intro. So my name is Lova Kramer and I'm the founder of Why Not 3 and what we do specifically is actually work-life balance for entrepreneurs with a peak performance. And when people ask me what that means is I usually say to them that you have certain limits. No matter who you are as a person, you have limits. And it's about recognizing those limits and kind of playing with them without ending up on the other side where you pretty much burn out and don't become productive for the next six months, which is um, not very efficient, of course. So we try to find those limits and kind of play around them so that we really do reach peak performance state and actually uh, get ultimate fulfillment as well. And that's where the work-life balance comes in. In the last uh, couple of um, yeah ages, I guess, uh, years, work-life balance has become such a fluffy term. But if you really see it in uh, an executive corporate world, then work-life balance actually produces more productivity because it fuels fulfillment. Uh, if your health, your relationships, and your wealth is all balanced, then you'll be happy going to work. You'll be passionate about the work that you do. You'll come back home passionate about the people you're surrounded with. And that makes you happy waking up every day. So when people ask me what I do specifically is... I usually say that I I wake up every morning and I imagine a world where everyone is inspired to achieve ultimate freedom so that they can follow their passions and become the best they can be. Now, the way it translates in my life is that I run several uh, active online businesses right now. One of the businesses, actually, we've just scaled to a new country. And right now, We are also launching in my second business, which is now Why Not 3, the community that I'm promoting. We're launching today a 30-day challenge where you're going to get the behind the scenes of pretty much kind of a new business because Why Not 3 has been active for, for a year and something now, but we are pretty much scaling to a new country. So that means I'm starting from not completely zero because we have a couple of clients here, but it's all about networking again getting our roots in, getting uh, the right people connected. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty much how we start from zero administratively and building everything up. So you can follow along in the 30-day challenge and in the podcast here, I'll be sharing as much as possible. This podcast today, this episode is going to be about uh, orientation, what we're going to be talking about in the next 30 days and, and several stuff like that. So What is the Why Not 3 community exactly about? So the Why Not 3 community is, um, I founded it in the idea of providing a training program that could fulfill my why, which I just uh, said, which is achieving the ultimate freedom so that people can follow their passions and become the best they can be. Because I believe that's how people become really, really happy. And um, so we do this by giving the best productivity tips that are that are out there that I got from clients that I work with that are executives or mentors that I've had throughout my journey and how I apply it. So not only do we use productivity tips, we we also make sure that the productivity is in line with happiness and fulfillment practices so that you can use all of those practices to go and build a real build a real business that fuels fulfillment achieve a real work-life balance that fuels happiness and eventually design a real way for you to inspire others. Because if you have all of those components, then you can really go on and achieve the ultimate best you that you can be. So why why are we doing this? Let's do let's have a little bit of a backstory. I am I already have a company, so why would I found this company, right? So what happened is I've been speaking now for three, four years actively and uh, about a year ago, and I I say the story on the YouTube channel and stuff like that, but about a year ago, 
I was invited to one of uh, uh, one of the conferences that I usually do for an organization called uh, ISEC. So I was there active on, on uh, they have three levels, local, national, and international, and I was uh, fortunate enough to be accepted to work on all three levels. And um, it was a volunteering organization. I, I love the message. I love what they do. And I was speaking at this conference, and one of uh, one of the slots that was that wasn't allocated, it was just free, uh, was called work life balance. And they put me with um, a co facilitator. So a facilitator is kind of a speaker, but uh, they speak less and they let the people, the delegates, do more. And so I was allocated this work life balance session, and. At the time, I was I was running my company, and we were just about uh, we we just finished a project with Coca Cola, and it was it was a very stressful period. We were going uh, to the multinationals. We we're now scaling. We we're we we're implementing systems to get to the next level and be able to handle the production. So. Uh, the conference was a hectic one for me. I slept two hours for five days and I, I wrote a blog post about it, how I, I do that and usually don't get crashes at, at the end. It's, I use a lot of biohacking techniques like, uh, well, a lot of supplements and then there are uh, devices that I have like uh, a cerebral electrostimulation machine that helps a lot if you sleep less than five hours. But that's all in the blog post. So I was at that conference and... I, I didn't really want to give the work-life balance workshop because to me it just seemed very fluffy. I was, uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was doing all of this company stuff where literally everything was systematized to the detail, and something fluffy didn't seem to fit in it. But uh, we had to do it, so I was, uh, I sat down with my co-speaker, and when we were brainstorming, I realized that my mentors in the last eight years, the the people that I followed and looked up to. They all had a balanced life. They had a proper relationship. They were actually making uh, a revenue, so so not net profit, but a revenue of a couple of million dollars in their companies, and uh, and they were actually fulfilled with what they were doing. There weren't a lot of those. You had a lot more people that were making a lot of money and were shit at their relationships. So, yeah, so. I, I realized that all of my mentors were giving me little signs throughout the last eight years of simple, simple principles that I was kind of in my head combining and sometimes forgetting and sometimes not. And so we decided that I would just share three principles. It was a 90 minute workshop, three simple principles over each 30 minutes. And I uh, think that that would be kind of a refreshment for everybody uh, because I assumed at the time that everybody would know those principles. And what happened is that I, we started the workshop and in the first 10 to 15 minutes, what we do is just expectation setting. And the things that start, the first two minutes, it was like normal things. Oh, I'm procrastinating a lot. Oh, how do you do time management and so on and so on. And then suddenly after like, five minutes of expectations suddenly got really deep and it was like oh I'm struggling with it was like it's it's imp I wrote it down somewhere but it's almost impossible to share what they were saying like at one point I got a girl that said something like um, how do you define life and I was just standing there and I literally said something like you realize this is a 90 minute workshop like I'm not sure if we can cover all of this now, luckily enough, when uh, the principles that I wanted to to kind of teach them, uh, they were very meta, but also very specific. So they were very zoomed out, but also very minute to minute, day to day. So most of the principles were covered. Um, I had to deviate of some and, and go deeper into everything, but most of the principles were covered. So we did the workshop and it ended up being a bit more than 90 minutes. But all the questions were answered at the end. The Q&A usually uh, goes really long. And all the questions were answered. And I had delivered at that point 15 plus conferences as a speaker. And it was a f I, I had inspired before, but that was the first workshop where I really realized that there was a big problem going on because the people in there suddenly seemed to have uh, a little bit more tangible hope it's the only way i could describe um the way they approached me i'd never had people approach me the way 
uh, they did. And when I came back from that conference, I, I kind of wanted to write a pamphlet. And I was talking to a best friend of mine who is also what I call a high achiever. And uh, she was she was struggling a lot at the time and she didn't know these principles. And what started happening in the in the next couple of weeks is that she started getting really sick and ended up in the hospital. And that's when I realized that the principles in the workshop were actually very unknown to many people and something something needed to happen. I didn't know what, but something needed to happen. And so I started looking at the pamphlet that I was writing and I kind of wanted to share more details in it. And what started out as a pamphlet of 20, 30 pages soon became 40, 50 pages and 90, 100 pages. Eventually it was like 140, 150 pages. And we finished the book and then we got a couple of publishers. Uh, we chose eventually one and now we're literally finished editing finally and uh, it's in the last proofreading phases and soon it's going to be released but obviously when I started writing the book I didn't realize how long it would take and in the meantime conferences were inviting me now to speak uh, specifically on this workshop so I took every opportunity to spread the message and we traveled to I traveled to six uh, countries delivering that speech, um, delivering that workshop. And eventually, at one point, uh, we realized how big the problem was because we also got accepted to, to give a speech at uh, the TEDx Rotterdam side event. Uh, we got invited to be there and share our message in a five-minute uh, pitch. And people really seemed to resonate with it. So... Obviously, the idea got validated and my passion project is still a passion project. My make, main company remains my main focus. But here and there, I shoot a podcast, I shoot a video and uh, my book is soon going to be released. If I'm really honest, most of this stuff is also for me because like I said before, I knew all the principles, but sometimes I tend to forget them because I'm very focused and, and then I wasn't applying them. So having a physical book and not some kind of ebook or uh, some tangible videos or podcasts because I fall asleep with sound, um, it's really good also for me because then I tend to remember everything that I, I yeah, I forgot things that my mentors had told me, stories that I've lived actually, that sometimes just because you're so focused, you tend to forget. And so in some way, there is a selfish incentive to, to keep Why Not 3 going, even though I try to serve as much, as much as possible, because everything that I learned from the experiences from clients and people on the blog and people on the email list, eventually uh, we know that we can help and we can serve more people. So let's get, let's get a little bit more practical. How and what do you get um, when you join our community? So the way uh, I constructed the community is that when you get to the website, you have a free blog, you have free YouTube, there's a lot of videos uh, because uh, my main company is a video marketing agency. So we, we tend to put out a lot of videos for you guys. And uh, when you go on the website, you get to sign up. And now because we're starting the 30 day challenge, you'll get uh, every day a video of me uh, pretty much in the day-to-day -day, um, what I do, how I'm st we literally moved uh, this month with the team to, to the Netherlands. So how I go about my day in scaling the company to a new country, so pretty much starting uh, from fresh. And, um, and every day I share that together with a training video, and it's going to be divided into four weeks of uh, training that you're going to go through with me. And uh, the four weeks are going to look a little bit, I'll, I'll explain it more today in the YouTube video. So if you really want to join the 30 day challenge, you can do that. But what you get when you sign up on top of that is uh, the original things that I shared with my email list, which is my daily creed, which when I was building my businesses was uh, something that I read every day. And it was uh, uh, originally it was made by a mentor of mine, Timothy Mark, which I highly, highly advise. He's the founder of 
uh, Secret Society Mastermind, which is a business platform. And um, he actually also started a 30 day challenge where he shares a lot, a lot of uh, inside secrets on how you can do and automate your online business. So one of the things that you're getting is that daily creed where um, you can get it in black or in white. I have it right here next to me. Um, I like the black and white one. I, I always print it out and I make sure that it's in plastic so that I can travel with it and it doesn't get broken. Uh, it's definitely worth it. What you also get is literally the uh, output of my official workshop. So in there, this is literally what the delegates are getting from me. Uh, step by step of what I suggest in the workshop, what we're going through in the workshop, and even what exercise we're, exercises we're going through. So if you're ever interested in reading more books, if you're ever interested in, in seeing more speeches, uh, the output has a literally in alphabet step by step of everything that um, I share in the workshop. So when people are asking me what books should I read, that's where I refer them to. And then on top of that, what you get is uh, every every day you'll be getting those training videos, like I said before, and an ebook. And this ebook uh, has a little small part from the official book that I put in there to to kind of give a teaser uh, of how the book will be like. And on top of that, you'll also get the 10 biggest mistakes that people make in balancing their work and life because people always ask me, what can I start doing? And so I wrote this ebook where I literally go over step by step um, what you can do. And in this podcast, what I actually wanted to do to give you already some kind of value is go one by one through each step and why I put it in there to give you a little bit more contact, context. And so the first tip that I, I share with everyone is it's in, in a sort of story is that uh, the character in the ebook who I called Howard is uh, the first mistake he makes is Howard doesn't take breaks, not even after work. Now, in there, I go deeper into the story and how over the long term, it's, uh, it's very unhealthy for him. And I give the example that at the time, he didn't see it, but he was neglecting his girlfriend and his health. And now, five years later, we can see a big difference. And this is actually based on uh, Darren Hardy's book, The Compound Effect. And what he, what he says in there is very interesting. It's that if you do a little bit every day, whether it's positive or negative, you're not going to see results right away. But in one year, you're going to see small results. In two years, you're going to see double of those results. And then in three years, it grows exponentially. So suddenly, if you would uh, eat, if you would like eat a small uh, cupcake every day or a little bit more cupcakes every day, then in three, four or five years, you would clearly see a difference between someone who didn't eat a cupcake and someone who did eat a cupcake. It's a really small thing. But it has such a big influence. It compounds over the long term. That's what Darren Hardy shares in his book. And so that's exactly what I mean with this number one mistake. Take breaks and focus on your health so that your stress doesn't compound over the long term. If you are at the stage where you can't pick up a book and read it, then there's something wrong with your focus. Now, if you've never uh, been able to read a book, of course, then that's that's uh, part of who you are. But if you were ever able to read books and suddenly you don't have the focus to read books, then that is a huge, huge problem. And that means that your stress is compounded over the years to the point that now your focus is just gone. And this, again, also goes for your external health that you can literally just can get fat if you start eating a lot of uh, stuff and never stop doing that. But it can also be a little bit, um, a little cupcake every day, a little bit of chocolate that you shouldn't be eating. And then your skin after five years, you're, you're going to have a little bit of, of a gut and it's all going to be very unhealthy. So never think over short term, think over long term. Everything that I'm sharing is literally what they say a marathon, not a sprint. 
The, the second tip that I share is Howard doesn't have tracking systems in place. And this is one of the biggest, biggest things that I advise. It's actually one of the first things that I put all of my clients through. Um, so when, when I get a coaching client, the first thing that I do with them is I, I code it in an Excel sheet. And in that Excel sheet, literally, we go step by step of what happened that week, uh, what they're planning next week, what went well. And they're literally scaling themselves on a one to ten uh, basis. And what that gives us over one week is nothing. But over 10 weeks, we start seeing a pattern of what works, what gives them fulfillment and what doesn't work. And so especially with the executives, what I start noticing is the first thing that if they're having a problem, for instance, in their health, the first instinct is, oh, I need to go really extreme and then somehow I'll balance it out. And that's just completely not true. Uh, you'll be more effective if you find the optimal point where you achieve peak performance. It's finding that optimal point that's really hard. And that's what I mean with that work-life balance. So, And the way you find that optimal point is not by going extreme. The way you find it is by having certain trackers in place and seeing where your limits are. Because your trackers are the ones that are going to tell you if um, you're, you've hit your limits or if you can expand it still or if you're not doing as much as you could be doing. And trackers can be simple. It can be a Word document. It can be an Excel sheet. It can be a coded sheet like I did. Uh, it doesn't matter. Some of my clients and even I started off with a simple Word document where I would write down um, things like this is what I'm doing today. This is my morning routine. This is my evening routine. Um, even now, one of the simplest uh, trackings that I do, which is called positive tracking, is I literally list how much money I made per day because I'm tracking the amount of money that I'm making per day because I want to improve that aspect. And I'm also tracking how much weight I'm losing every day. And uh, the way I track that is I have a specific weight scale that's connected from with things. It's connected with my iPhone. And just stand on the scale every day and every time I can just refresh the app and everything's just saved there. I've been doing it for a couple of years and I recently restarted it again. And I have all the data still in my phone, which means I can literally compare and track if I'm improving or if I'm eating too much cupcakes, <laughs> which happens to me as well. So the third tip is Howard tends to neglect relationships and this is a very big one uh, especially in my circles where uh, especially young entrepreneurs they start focusing a lot on their relation uh, a lot on their business and they're so focused that they just completely neglect all the relationships around them and and the common excuse I then hear is Oh no, I have work. Oh no, like I'll, I'll almost be done with this. I'll have a networking event. Uh, and we just never get around to meeting. And I've seen this time and time again. And after a while, it's just the connection just fades. And you see them before where they had maybe a huge circle of friends and going out with people now at the end of their entire stint and sprint and everything they were doing and focusing on their business, there's maybe two or three friends left. And most of the time, even no relationship left. And having no relationship when no partner, when you're building a business is really brutal because it becomes really lonely as you're building everything. It's not as glamorous as most people try to say. It's literally you're sitting here day by day, constructing your own day, knowing what you're going to focus on. And sometimes the focus that you have to do something like taxes or something or checking with your accountant or building systems in your team or recruitment and stuff like that, that can take days before you build in those systems. And those are all days that you're sitting alone in your room building those systems on your laptop or in the office and so on. So definitely focus on relationships um, and Bill Gates, Richard Branson, Warren Buffett, all those people, they focus on relationship. They have kids, they have uh, partners and it all seems to work out. So they're not, they all have the same amount of hours in the day. So if they can do it, we can do it too. Yes, they process information way faster, but there are shortcuts to it. And one of those shortcuts, which I already shared is tracking by being focused really well over half an hour and giving people the time 
um, it'll have such a big impact. And just as I said before, consistency matters. If you do it every week consistently or every two weeks or every month consistently, it compounds over a long while to eventually become a really tight relationship uh, with your family, friends and partner. Now, tip number four is um, Howard doesn't know his core values. I'm going to go deeper into this in the 30 day challenge. So definitely, definitely follow that. The core values is uh, something that will guide you uh, on when you're making decisions. After a while, it'll be very ingrained in you. It is just a kind of um, outing of your gut feeling. So whenever if honesty, for instance, would be your core value and you would be lying, then if you would reflect about it or after you lied, you would not feel very comfortable. Now, if honesty isn't your core value, then it wouldn't matter for you. So knowing your core values is, is very, very important because it, it gives you a compass whether or not you're doing something well. And it'll give you a second chance to redeem yourself before people catch you, I guess. If you're lying to people and honesty is your core value and people catch you, you can't redeem yourself anymore. But if you've reflected about it and you know you haven't told the, the whole truth, then you um, saying something right after uh, you didn't say the whole truth will will make people respect you and, and they will know that they won't have to check up on you because they will understand that you have certain core values that you don't break and you don't need uh, someone to check up on whether you're following those core values or not. So very, very important and we'll go deeper into the 30 day challenge on how to discover them. Uh, then the number five is Howard doesn't reflect. And reflecting is not as fluffy as, uh, as you might think. Uh, that's why I said literally here, reflection is not for real business people that get stuff done. At least that's what Howard thinks. No, the real executives, my mentors that I know, really reflect a lot. Um, they do a lot of system design in their company and in their lives. So reflection is no, the number one key to that. If you don't reflect and work on the business, uh, then you can't you can't move forward. I had a speech uh, which was recorded and put on YouTube completely in Venture Cafe um, about the three mistakes that uh, no the three things I wish I would have told myself eight years ago. And one of those things uh, that really resonated uh, with uh, one of the entrepreneurs, which actually made a video testimonial for us. Um, and he's like a serial entrepreneur has been active for 20 plus years in the, in the business. And um, he literally said hearing how you how one of the things is working on the business and not in the business can really uh, make a difference in your business. If you're cons constantly f focusing on, on having a job and working in the business and not systematizing and, and putting trackers into place and reflecting about how you can improve stuff, then you're going to do the same thing over a period of 20 years, which is which is not good. So then we get to uh, tip number six, and that's Howard doesn't have any core goals. Uh, and again, it kind of goes into, it's not similar to core values, it's something else. It's about setting goals, what the maximum amount is, how you can do it. And uh, it'll be very long to get into this, but we, we wrote a blog about this that you can dive deeper into. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be covering this in the 30 day challenge. So definitely check that out. Uh, but the key component, and I wrote this down in here as well, is that goals give you a direction. And my mentors, I used to do goals every six months, but my mentors uh, do it every week and then just check up every day and remind themselves what they're doing. And then every week they're just um, seeing if their goals have to be changed or uh, going into a different direction. So they have big goals, obviously. So five-year goals, one-year goals, six-month goals. They also have the weekly goals and the daily goals. And they always reflect about it. And that's one of the things that definitely you should remember. Um, have core goals and just make sure to focus on them. And, and read it all in the booklet. Now, when we get to, to, pay, to the tip number seven, Howard doesn't have a vision. This is in line with the goal. It's the next step. Um, a vision, if you don't have a vision and you achieve an ultimate balance, 
Uh, so we define life into health, wealth, and relationships. Uh, and each uh, area has an internal and external component. Now, the idea, and it's based uh, loosely on Aristotle's um, idea of ultimate eudaimonia, which is achieving ultimate happiness, which is a journey, uh, an activity that you should be doing constantly. So balancing all those three areas should make you happy, but it doesn't make you completely fulfilled yet. So in order to achieve complete fulfillment, you also need to know um, your code and your why and phrase it into a sentence and then align everything that you do to your companies and, and, and the partners you're with and the people you're with. Align it to your code um, and create a vision around it. And that will fuel you every morning. Every time you wake up, um, you'll be like, you'll be wanting to start your day because there's only so much time and you want to get to your vision as fast as possible. And that's how you really achieve the ultimate eudaimonia, ultimate happiness and fulfillment, because you have the balance going on that keeps you happy day to day and, and fulfilled. And you have the vision that drives you and, and puts a fire under your ass, which is uh, very important as well. So you can definitely read it up there and we'll be covering that in the 30 day challenge as well. Then we have Howard doesn't ask questions. Now, one of the things, one of the questions that I get a lot is, how do you find a mentor? What, how do you get a mentor? And the reality is that the way you get a mentor is just by asking a lot of questions. The guys that I know that have really good mentors is they would ask everyone questions and somehow they might stumble onto someone that they really resonate with and they just follow him and that becomes their mentor. Now it can be a mentor in a book, it can be in a, in a, in a video, or it can be on email, uh, or w what I do is physical or on Skype, uh, where I literally just meet up with them and ask them questions. But you need to respect um, the art of asking them a question and actually uh, following up on, on the question and, and sharing your results with them. If you don't share your results, then, then you just wasted their time pretty much. And that's how they feel. Uh, so it's a little bit like, yeah, if you're really interested in uh, going to the next level, whether you're in a job or an entrepreneur and you want a mentor in life, just ask a lot of questions and eventually whether it's on Google or in real life, you'll stumble on someone that you really resonate with. Uh, and then number nine. So Howard thinks it's impossible to structure. Is life not supposed to be chaotic? And the reason I put that in there is because that's literally what uh, one of the delegates asked in my first workshop. And I used to think like that. I used to burn out every three, four months. Uh, and it was like small burnouts, sometimes big burnouts, where I just had one week, two weeks where I couldn't do anything, or sometimes a month where I just, I couldn't do, I was just sitting in my bed, couldn't uh, focus, couldn't read a book, couldn't do anything. And, uh, and no, it's not supposed to be chaotic. And what made it for me, and I wrote this in a blog post, is a speech by Art Williams, just do it. And this guy has made it. He has a multi-billion dollar company and he has a family, a good family, children and everything. And he literally says in that speech that it's not the company that comes first. He was religious, so he puts religion first, then family and then, um, and then his company. And just hearing that from a multi-billion dollar uh, CEO, you start realizing that no, it's not supposed to be chaotic. You're not supposed to be burning out. You're not supposed to be neglecting your relationships. And he also shares the story of how he thought he needed to neglect all of that because the executives that he was looking up to just sacrificed everything to, to become an executive. And here you see a guy like Art Williams in his speech just do it, literally saying, no, that's not how you're supposed to be doing it. And that's also how you're not be going to become... Um, successful so no it's not supposed to be chaotic and even though it is chaotic sometimes no matter what happens you always wake up and you always get, go to bed so you can always get a morning routine and always get an evening routine 
And that is going to get you the structure in the chaos that is life. <laughs> and then we get to the last tip, which is tip number 10. Howard doesn't invest in himself and doesn't read self-help books. Now, one of the tips that one of my mentors shared with me, I think it was Jim Rohn. Uh, and then Darren Hardy said that. And so he said, for every dollar you invest in yourself, you're going to get $10 back. And one of the stories that I share is uh, the New York story, how a couple of years ago, I think this was like five years, four years ago, not completely sure. I, uh, I was uh, just started doing sales uh, for, for a charity organization like UNICEF and Oxfam. And um, I was, it was based on commissions. And I started for the first time using those commissions and, and instead of processing uh, free information, I would start buying books and read the books and then I would grow, grow and grow. At one point I hit a wall, just like when you go to the gym, you hit a wall. And uh, I knew that I needed a real physical mentor that I could ask a specific question that he could um, then use and literally answer the step-by-step -step procedure on fixing it. So I scouted out, uh, make a long story short, I scouted out a mentor that I really resonated with at the time that I, I had watched all of his speeches, so I knew what he was about, I knew what he was preaching, and I wanted to know more. And I saw that he had the closest workshop to, at the time I was living in Belgium, he, the closest workshop was in New York. So I... Uh, I did like this was I didn't have any money at the time. I was a student going through law school. I didn't have family, like barely any money. Just started a job in sales, uh, and and I was just so determined to get my degree uh, in law that no matter what would happen, I would just combine all of that. And so, I uh, the course cost at the time I think like fifteen hundred dollars and you had you had to buy the tickets and the hotels and everything so it ended up, ended up being something like two three thousand dollars it was it was really expensive and for a student that didn't have anything not even parents to back them back uh back them up it was just it was a very big reach after long discussions with my friends uh eventually i just put the deposit down and that really put a fire under my ass. And I just, in the coming months, I started performing really well in the company. Uh, and at one point, I even hit the national record for that company. And that's when I realized that um, by investing in something, you start valuing it more. And not only that, you start performing more because it puts a fire under your ass. And, and that's when... Obviously, I, I made enough money. I, I went to New York. It was definitely worth it. And when I went there, like I literally thought, ah, worst case, I like I made enough money and the fire was enough. But what I learned was so much beyond what I could have imagined um, in the YouTube speeches, in the in the books and so on. Uh, and the only reason why I could learn so much and ask those specific questions, I had like 100 questions, literally like, 80 or 100 questions written down. I was just asking them the whole weekend, um, asking every step, step by step, what, what I missed, what I was doing wrong, and so on. And um, everything got answered. And I learned where before I could maybe interpret uh, a certain um, yeah, body language expression or a certain intonation of a person and adjust based on that. And that's how it usually sell. Now I, I learned from my mentor how I could predict. I could literally predict how somebody would act and create systems around it so that most of the time I would have an answer to that. So I learned not, not only that, I learned so much more beyond that that when I got back, I, I actually quit my job, got another job and started earning more money. And, and that's... Uh, a year later, I think I founded uh, my first main company that that's uh, active right now, and and just it changed my entire life uh, by investing in that. It really just changed the entire way of how I conducted, how I viewed life, and how I approached life, and it's been the the foundation of. 
pretty much how I network, how I create uh, affiliates, how how I create um, ads and everything for for big companies and marketing. So foundation is everything, and investing into your foundation. Um, It'll be an understatement to say that for every dollar you invest in yourself, you're, you're going to get $10 back uh, because I found it to be very, very, very true. And so those are the 10, uh, 10 tips, kind of the 10 uh, biggest mistakes that people make in balancing their work and life, the people that, uh, that don't make that stuff. So this is kind of the first episode. Uh, let me know what you thought of it. Um, definitely go to why not 3.com forward slash 30 dash day dash challenge or just go to why not 3.com um, and make sure to subscribe let me know what you think of the podcast uh, so far uh, if you if maybe something was glitchy or not clear let me know it's my personal email address I make sure to respond to everyone uh, on the comments even on instagram i comment on every every comment that i get uh and facebook so definitely let me know how it went uh, if you liked it what you learned from it and i hope to see you on the 30 day challenge and hopefully more on this podcast Welcome to the Why Not 3 podcast, where you get the behind the scenes of achieving a work-life balance with peak performance. 